Everybody knows this is our last year to be doing this here in Las Vegas. Um, I guess we're going to be uh, moving to Los, Los Angeles to be doing this. So enjoy this while we can. This so far has been a great show. Let's give it up for Robert. We're taking care of all this. Without him, none of this would be possible today. And we thank you very much, sir. Okay, I'm going to go through a few of, uh, if I can, I'll try to go through as many of these functions on this program as I possibly can. And to try to get a little bit more into in depth of what I do with the programs listed on this main boot screen of the bill and budget work disk that I've been working on probably for the last 20 years. Uh, yeah, I'm very slow at this stuff. <laughs> but uh, really, I'm sure that everybody knows about their basic. Everything here is written in basic, so that's just easy enough to make any changes or modifications to any of the programs that you see. Um, I'll be using the SX64 for my computer and an MPS802 for my printer. First one we're just going to start with is check it out. So you just turn around and hit number one. And you're going to load up check it out. Now this was published and run back in 1992. Found, after it was published and working, I found a lot of problems with the program. So I turned around and made some modifications. And this is the re-release of the program. As you can tell, there's their copyright and there's theirs presented by Fresno Commodore Users Group right there. Okay, make sure your printer is activated and online, which it is. You insert your check, here it is. I blotted it out, nobody can see that. Nobody can see what I've got on there. In case this hits the internet, that's it. The fun part of it is, is making sure that it's flush. All right, that's gonna give me a little bit of a hassle. So we're gonna turn around and force it in there. And there we go. And I don't think Robert can see that with the camera, but you want to bring that up to the ribbon. The printer will then push with the printer head and then hit space after you've done so. Uh, excuse me. And uh, then we want to put in the date. What is today, guys? The 10th? 10th. 10th? Okay, thanks. And you got your choice of write a check, load a check from disk. We'll get into that on the second program or exit to basic. So we're just going to write a check right here. We're going to turn around and make a check out to the Fresno. Oops. Friends. Yeah, I screwed that up. Oh well. Fingers. All right, hit space to continue. There it is, nice and fixed. Fresno, Commodore, User, Group. And the amount, what are the fees usually? $20 a year? Uh, for, you mean membership? $12. 12 okay, we're going to make a check for $12 for Robert. So it's $12. And it, of course, wants the digital amount. I know most people don't write too many checks anymore, but I have found in my journeys of wrestling with thousands upon thousands, and I'm meaning that literally almost, of bill collectors, they want something. <laughs> Never let them have all my check access to your bank account. Never, never, never. It's not fun to find you have no money and you can't feed your kids. All right, and this is my annual fee. And there's what you've got right there. Kind of loops a little bit here. That worked out, though. And any changes, you can turn around and hit yes or no and you press up for restart. We don't need to do any changes, any changes, no. Are we ready to print? Yes. The 
the printer will turn around and restart itself. And you take that out, just a little bit off center, but there it is. That turns around, if you've got wrist problems like I do, this is a great time saver. And after it's done, you, of course you've got to sign it, you can't get out of that. They kind of get a little bit mad when you don't sign your checks. So, print space after you're done. Do you want to quit or continue? Well, we've printed the one and only check we're going to print today, guys. So we're going to quit. And it says thank you and have a nice day. That's program one. We're just going to go right down the list, okay? We're going to go right into Checkmate. You can tell this kind of roots re back into the program, the main boot screen. Let's see what we got here. Checkmate was fun. I was hoping to get that published by Run2, but Run closed the stores right after Check It Out came out. So Checkmate, naturally I got two chess pieces there. Really, really cute, but it's fun. All right. We're going to add a file today. And we're going to call it the same thing. Because we're going to be writing this once a year. Oh, really? Oh, this is a file name. I'm sorry, guys. I thought it was something else. Let's call this check. Okay, that was my bad. I can't read. No, I don't want to do that. We're going to call it in small letters. Yep, that is correct. There we go. Now we're caught up. Come on, Leonard. Just go right on down, guys. And it saves it instantaneously to the disk. That looks real good there. Yep, I like this screen, Robert. Thank you very much. And it's done. And we're going to exit this program. And it's going to go right back to the main boot screen. Now let me show you what deal. I'm going to get into that. We're going to go right back to the first one again. I'll show you guys what this is going to do. All right. We don't got a check in there. Put the date back in. Now we're going to load a check from this. And we already know that it's called FCOG. And you'll okay, you got to uh, press the uh, pound sign to list to this directory. And if it doesn't come up, see that? You just turn around and save yourself a whole lot of time. Just one input reboots into the original, works out just fine. Any changes, press up to restart. And we're going to turn around and just flat out exit like that. I don't know. I don't know if anybody else has this problem like, except for me. It seems as though the more you turn around and loop into a program in and out, in and out, in and out, it builds up itty bitty pieces of bits of data. And once in a great, great while, that doggone thing just bogs down. So you have to just turn it off and restart. I don't think anybody else has that problem but Leonard. Yes. Yeah.
That's no, that's, that's garbage collection. Yeah, that sounds like a problem with garbage collection. Yeah, that's what it is. I think it is. So, uh, I think you, you have to run the. Yeah, you have to run some kind of uh, way so that uh, garbage does not build up. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time. But now we're back to that. All right then. T for two. Turn around and print them on a good old-fashioned envelope. We're going to tuck that in there nice and neat. I like the ASCII art. <laughs> hmm? The, the art that has the art when you're like loading screens. The art that you have. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't quite understand. The logos, the envelope, the dresser where it says, and the like, the chess pieces that you have, the teacups with the walks in. It's ASCII art. Mm. Right, it's art made yeah, it's, you bet it is. CBM art. Mm -hmm. It has the custom Commodore character set. It's, it's, it was all I basically knew. I'm just a very basic guy. Um, that's why I, I've been labeling myself the redneck programmer. So, you know, just me, at home, you put your envelope in there, you can actually put your your envelope on in there like so. Now we're going to have to turn around and make an address from name that'll be me. My address, we won't put the real one. Oops, sorry about that. City. Everybody knows I'm from Kansas City. I always get confused. Is it Kansas City, Kansas, or is it Kansas City, Missouri? I'm in Kansas City, Kansas. Ah, okay. I'm the little half. <laughs> Kansas City, Missouri is absolutely huge. Whoa. Mm -hmm. There I go again. Save that under my name. Then we're going to make a two address because we got to send this to Robert. Uh, no, uh, send it to Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman. All right. You like her, huh? All right. I'm glad you do. Make me think about it a minute. Uh, okay. She, doesn't she live on an island? <laughs> What's the name of that island again that Wonder Woman was living on? Well, it used to be Paradise Island, but now it's called Themyscira. Okay, uh, if you can type out, type out, I don't even know how to spell. If you can type out, uh, no, I, li I like Paradise Island. I can spell it. <laughs> I think that's what uh, Charles Moulton Martin turned around and called it in the first place. They turned around and changed it when uh, all that. Um, <laughs> Some Iowa. <laughs> yes, Paradise Island is in the middle of Iowa. <laughs> hey, haven't you ever heard of the oceans of Iowa? No, what's that? That's kind of like whaling in Kansas. It's not illegal. That's why I don't go swimming. Uh, yeah, uh, I ain't stupid. Country designation. Uh, mm -hmm. Still in the U.S., guys. Okay. We're going to save this true address as WW. Okay. Uh, now we can turn around and call that very same file, so we just wrote in one and two off on the computer. <laughs> but if you want to turn around and save yourself some time and you've gone through all of that, just hit four and it's all there. there it is. It's already there. And it looks good to me. Ready to print? Yes. Print on what? A number seven size envelope, which is what I brought here. They're now six and three quarters. Don't ask me why they did that. This is also 
smaller than what it used to be. They used to be seven inches long. A number 10, which is a longer one, of course, or the window style, which I found out later was called the payroll style. And those there actually print on a entire sheet of paper. They're very, very nice if you just want to send an extra sheet of paper and just drive them nuts at the person you want to send it to. All right, then. We're going to print on a number 7. Now, the fun part of it is with this particular envelope, because it has a self-seal, I don't think Robert can see that with the camera. I'll have to zoom out and see it. It's got a self-seal. It's, th it's, uh, it's got three layers of sheet of paper, which does not fit too well in the printer, so you're going to have to help it along by uh, holding it up and giving it a slight tug. And there's your address. Right there. Leonard, does it have to be an MPS 802 printer? Could it be a different printer? It can be a different printer. You bet it can. The, I just said uh, this is just the one I've been working with. You know. So it's kind of fun to, I mean, I, I like the, excuse me, this is the one, not this is the one, this is the one. <laughs> so. It's all right to be working with that. Yes, yeah, like if somebody has a, an NPS 801 printer instead of 802. The 801, um, there is, in fact, I brought you, uh, Brian, you brought that up. Um, there are some adjustments you can make. You get into the program in basic, and lines 310 to 360 will turn around and take care of your horizontal. And lines 1310 to 1470 will take care of your vertical. So you can make all your adjustments there. All right then, we're gonna get out of here. Yes, garbage collection. I'd love to turn around and figure out how to uh, clean all that up. What do you mean? You mean delete? No, yeah, just get it out of there, because I mean shutting it off is a pain. Cool project. Yep, another school project. All right then. We're going to go into the ledger because we want to keep track of what we pay Robert every year. I'll give you guys a lot of credit. See that? Okay. What is that little thing next to the first one from the That's supposed to be an eraser, but it didn't. Oh, it is? That's it's supposed like to be. giving us the finger. It does look that way, doesn't it? I never thought of that. <laughs> could, be, could be a uh, pacifier, too. Okay. Who knows? Okay. We're going to create a ledger entry. Now this, believe it or not, is pretty relatively long and complicated. All right then, so... Oh. Try to type a little bit faster. Oh, yeah, entry too long. No problem. There's a way around that one. Boom. All right then, we don't have an account number, so we'll call it none. I know it has a web address. Um, I don't want to get into all that okay. right now. www.dickestell.com right. slash fcub dash dot html. Whoops, you're way up at the top. Yes, I am. Something's in there that it doesn't like. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Oh, this is Paradise Island again. <laughs> All right, then. We're just going to call it something else because my memory just went real quick. All right, cheat. Let me cheat. 
Hall of Justice. There it is. I know it's called the Watchtower now. Oh, come on, Leonard Gray. Losing my first letter. Sorry for all the problems, guys. Uh, you're under the pressure here. The pressure. Yes, I'm feeling it. Falling, we're not even going to call you. Amount owed is usually $12. Minimum payment due is $12. When? That is annual. Method of payment? Oh, we just wrote them. We just wrote them a check. Save data as? We're going to call it FCUD. Go. We're going to read that because I want to find out what turned around and made a mistake on that. Where's the mistake at? It just turned around and calls itself web. That's good. I'll live with that. None of this data here is printed. None of this stuff is printed unless you tell it yourself to print. All right, you want to make a payment, which we did. Come on, three. There you go. Currently, you owe 12. Would you like to pay 12? Of course I would. You want to archive this? You bet I do. And there it goes. When you say archive, it's story it on the desk. On the desk. Yes. On the desk. There we go. It's not doing it yet. Sorry about that. All right then. What is uh, number seven? It says manipulate permanent information. Is that just that? That is the data. Let's go there. Well, you know that little web thing that showed up? Yes. That'll fix that. See, it is. There it is. So we don't want to go through all that. We'll just call it www.dignestel.com. Okay. We'll just call it that for now. How's that? See, now I turn around and fix that problem. So, we turned around and want to save this information. So, is your ledger just more like a database? Yeah, pretty much this is all what it is. It, it's, it's an, it turns around and allows me to keep track of everything. Then we want to exit to the main. All right, then. If we wanted to print all that data, we could on number six. If we want to erase it, which I think that would make uh, uh, Robert a little happy. <laughs> nah. This data may not be recoverable. Okay, think about it. Ah, uh, we'll get rid of it. And we wait for the light to go off, which it did. No. All right, we're going to quit. We're getting a little bit more detailed than what I did for anybody who showed up last time I was here and did this. Money manager. You guys ready for this one? This is a longer one. Okay. How we do it on time? Okay.
Actually, I think these graphics are kind of nice. I'm being a smarty here, so I apologize. Also, also, well, really, when you know as little as I do, and you can get as far as I have, I think you've done pretty well. This program is 71 blocks long. It, it contains a lot of stuff you can do. So, it is really, really nice. Enter your month and year. Is this a new month? Yes. Is this the first input to the program? Yes. Checkbook balance. Okay, well, we got $12 to our name. Category codes for the next year must be set up. Please return to continue. Now, if we don't need any more codes, that'll give you up to eight. And we're just going to go right through this because we're just going to. What is AUT again? Is that automobile? Yeah, it's auto. Housing, utilities, telephone, insurance, savings, ca uh, charge, cash, groceries, uh, auto, gas, entertainment, restaurant, clothing, donations, medical, and equipment. Oh. And there's also a miscellaneous right over there. That's the column you want to try to stay out of as much as you can, because you never know. You never know, because you'll put something in there and go, what is miscellaneous? What did I do? And you can turn around and change these up to four. You don't have to leave them at three. You can change them up to four. What do you mean, change them up to four or what? You know, like this. You don't have to have uh, three three letters. You turn around and do that. Okay. That'll work just fine. Okay. That didn't come out right. Any changes? No. Print codes on printer? No. Just going to turn around and save all that data. We're going to add a transaction. And today is the 10th category code. Since I typed it in wrong. Come on, let her focus. Check number, oh, what is that? Okay. <coughs> you can even do this without the period. Look at that. Changes no. Type end to finish that all up. And there it goes. Saving all that. Now we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. You can view and change your transactions. Print your check register. You got a payment analysis and uh, easy budget, which is my favorite thing. You can do a new month. You can do this up for the whole year if you want to. Hmm. Yeah. This is the whole program that got me started to take everything else to where I've done. It's real, I mean, you know, when you get started up. Uh, understanding and yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know a thing one about money, and it's this thing's taught me a lot. We're going to turn around and go to easy budget. We're going to prepare the budget. List the budget for the previous month. We don't have a previous month, so we're going to go right down here to this one. Estimated income, oh, we're only going to make $12 this month. <laughs> any changes? No. Print budget on printer? No. Then I ain't got any paper. Print budget for next month? We can do that too. So you can do this for the whole year. Totally. Just going to save that. Budget's a dirty word. 
spending plan. Nice word. <laughs> Budget says no. Spending plan says maybe. Oh. Think about it. A difference. Try not to eat up too much of your time, Robert. All right. You can even turn around and go back and change stuff from a previous month if you want to. Or you can quit. Are you sure? Yes. That turns around and takes you right back out to the basic. And believe it or not, that's all it does for me. I've got some copies here. Anybody would like to have one? They're a dollar a piece. And I'm just asking you to pay for the disc. That's all it is. You can have the program for free. So it's really, really nice. I mean, I've been working with it for years. It's uh, helped me a lot to turn around and stay on focus and on target with my debts, with everybody I owe, with all the money coming in. It's uh, really, it's really nice to have. And of course, I've written everything in BASIC and I haven't turned around and changed all the uh, data to make it where you can't get into it. So you can change the BASIC if you want to work for your own specific needs. So, Linda, you've been using this program in your life. And uh, how many jobs do you have right now? I have three jobs. Three jobs. Mm -hmm. so, and you're inputting all that information into these programs? Yeah. Well, you just add it up. And that's the nice thing, you know, you turn around and add that, you know, get that. 10 plus 10 is 20. That's how I do it. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, do we have any questions for Leonard on these various programs here? Yep, yeah, pretty much a whole bunch of stuff here on one disc, and I'm only asking a book for it, guys. Well, I guess we're done here, Robert. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. much, guys, for listening to me. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Oh, uh, you want to talk about your book, my dear? Oh, you want me to talk about the book? Yes, talk about your book. Oh, guys, guess what I got here? In March, the whole new book came out. Yeah, some of you already purchased it. Thank you very kindly. I appreciate it. And this is another collection of articles, stories, essays, um, other things I've written on or about the Commodore, adventures with the Commodore. Um, not really any, any uh, programming, pretty much. Um, I tried to stay away from that because there's enough programming stuff out there. There's enough user's guides out there as it is. This is kind of a relaxing read. Something you might want to turn around and read with at night before you go to bed. Um, I recommend it if you want to read it in the bathroom. <laughs> it's a good bathroom reader because there's only, I mean, the chapters are anywhere three to five pages long, and next thing you know, you're done. <laughs> what do you think? And next thing you know, you'll, you'll have it done in about a month. You know, so. It's going for $10, usually $14.95 on Amazon. $10 here at the show. Um, I think I've got five copies left, thanks to everybody buying the uh, nine that I bought, or brought. So uh, please stop on by, check out the table, see what I got here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's just about it. Any questions on Lenny's book? Leonard, um, I know that you've talked about problems with your publisher or tried to get it published. Yeah. Can you, can you tell more about that, about trying to publish your book or the troubles you've gone through? Oh, my goodness. Basically, you just changed publishers, Robert. <laughs> um, the last, the last pub, on, on Run, Stop, Restore, I had so much hassle with um, Author House, which I don't mind, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned them by name, so if that video gets to them, I apologize. Um, but they're just doing their jobs. They are, they are in a, a for-profit publisher, and then who isn't? And uh, they really just, they did not know what a Commodore was. 
they even wrote me and they said, we don't know what this is. I was like, it's a computer. Don't you guys have anybody over there who's working in their, who's in their 50s or 40s? And so they turned around and put a, you have a copy, Robert. Is that a PS2 or a PS1 on the front cover? Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, it, they put a, a PC, a very old PC on the front cover. And I have been razzed so much and I have had to explain myself in at least two different magazines as to why this looks the way it does. Um, you know, now that it's been all these years, I really can't blame Author House too much. They just, they were honest up front. They said, we do not know. And I was a little bit younger and a lot more impetuous than what I am now. And um, so a friend of mine, who's also my rival, I don't know if you guys are, you have an enemy mind, but that's what uh, this guy was. Writing. Oh yeah, he was writing. He, he turned around and introduced me to Create Space, which is now Kindle Direct. Kindle, uh, Amazon Kindle bought them out. And um, they, um, he turned around and told me all about free publishing, which really blew me away. And you, all you have to do is be willing to do as much work as you possibly can on your book. Your cover, your back cover, your front cover, your content, your, your, uh, in, your spacing, uh, all that stuff. You do it all. When you publish your book on a self-publisher, you are doing all the work. So it looks exactly the way you want it to look. So... I was kind of surprised that the second copy I did, I mean, I've done a few uh, other books, and this copy right here of uh, this book right here turned out the best so far out of all of them I've done. Because you're going to learn and you're going to do trial and error. And uh, good news is you can order author's copies and you can look, peruse them over and look at them. And with Kindle Direct, you have a few more options than you had with Create Space. Um, with Kindle Direct, I can turn around and take this book out of the market if I want to. I couldn't do that on Create Space. Once you publish it, it is done. You have any mistakes, it's there. They're going to stay. But if Kindle Direct, you can turn around and click Unpublish Book, and it will unpublish the book for you. It'll be taking it out of circulation until you make all your corrections, re-upload, redo everything, and then re-release. So it's, they're, they're uh, really, they've, apparently they've studied, done a little bit of work, and when uh, Create Space, we bought Create Space, they decided uh, that they can turn around and do things a little bit better, and believe it or not, I think they may have. I think they may have. It's just, to me, Create Space was just a lot easier to understand and work with. But uh, uh, as you get around Kindle Direct, you will learn a little bit more. And like I said, you've got a lot of, you have a lot of extra choices that you didn't usually have. So. Anything else I can help you guys with? Any other questions, guys? Yeah. Okay, thanks, Larry. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of the show.